Hello and welcome to Star Citizen. My name is Even Lease, and today on 10 Minutes or Less Ship Review, I'm taking a look at the Argo Mole, a mining vessel meant for the multi crew, which is right behind me. Let's go ahead and get into it. Starting off at the Argo Mole, you're going to see that this is just a very industrial looking ship. It even comes with a very bright orange paint, and it's because, well, it is an industrial ship. It's a very big workhorse meant for mining. Mole literally stands for Multi Operator Laser Extractor. And now what that means is this ship goes around planets, moons, or even just out there in space, and mines rocks. It gains all sorts of different resources that you can take to a station and make a ton of money off of which i'm not going to get into really how you're supposed to do that this isn't a mining tutorial but with this review i will show you the outside the inside and you know go over the details of the ship now starting off with the details this ship costs 315 dollars if you were to buy it on the store or if you want to buy it in game it is 5,130,500 auec that's actually a pretty decent price but Again, do expect that price to go up in 3.23, which is coming to us soon. I don't know what the price point will be just yet, but <laughs> once I do, I'll let you know. Now, this ship is meant for the multi-crew. Soloing this ship would be pretty difficult, honestly. People can do it, but it's a pain in the butt, <laughs> which I can totally see why. And you'll see why once we get into the interior. First, let's start off with, does this ship have any weapons to defend itself? Yes, it does. Now, is it going to be able to defend itself with those weapons? Eh, probably not. But you do see right up there, right where I'm circling, it does have two size 2 CF-227 Badgers, which outputs 402 DPS. It's not bad, but this ship moves like a whale. It's pretty big, not the biggest ships out there, but it moves horrendously, and its acceleration is terrible, so I really wouldn't fight with it. Honestly, if you're going to use those guns, it's probably to protect you from a land creature or a land vehicle or person and not really against another ship, <laughs> unless they're AFK and then you just have an easy target. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> now, this ship does have three mining lasers. You have one on each wing, per se, here and on the other side, as well as one here in the front. These lasers are both, all three are size 2, and they are the Arbor MH2 lasers, which are all right. You're going to typically upgrade these pretty quick just to get, you know, better proficiency and everything with mining and cracking rocks with a little bit more stability. Outside of that, this ship does have two shield generators on it, and it gives you a total of 18,000 shields, which is great because... I'm going to be honest with you, when you crack on a rock, there's always a mistake that could happen, so if it explodes, it could pretty much wipe you out if you don't have enough shield uh and then outside of that it's always good to have shield just to defend yourself i think i left the engines on which is not like me i don't think i did though anyways uh so eighteen thousand shields pretty good i like that and then the ship has only twenty four thousand eight hundred ship hp which throws me off a little bit it's a very you know thick industrial ship and it's meant to go out there and take the elements around you whether it being space and you know all sorts of little asteroids and stuff and rocks that are going to hit you and potential of hazards wherever you go i'm surprised this ship doesn't have a bigger health pool honestly outside of the health pool you do have a quantum fuel tank that holds 2759 quantum fuel and you have a total of well 96 SCU of storage for your mineral collecting, which is actually really good. Let's go ahead and take the elevator up here. Yep, there we go. And we will go inside, take a look around. Now, I will tell you right now, it is like entering a utensil drawer. It is just stainless steel everywhere. 
Uh, it's very shiny. It's very misc esque honestly. Um, it's very industrial, right? But very shiny, very shiny. Uh, everything is just... It, I, if you're in a very hot environment, this whole ship is going to be like the inside of an oven. <laughs> Uh, you're going to have a lot of your, you know, access to components here. You know, jump drive. Probably something here behind all these nice little silver doors. And then behind these little doors here, if you were to open each one on each side, this leads you to the actual mining laser on each wing. And you also have a suit locker here, which, you know, recently I'm afraid to open certain things like that. <laughs> You'll either get ejected from your ship or get stuck in the wall or I don't know. <laughs> it's only happened once, but it's still... That scarred me to this day. Now, this is the view you get outside of the wing, so it feels pretty protected. And I'll show you a little bit more of a view as well. This door just shut on me uh, while you're in the seat. So go ahead and look at that right now. Other side is literally replicated, so no big differences between either side of the wing. It's just respective of each other, you know, each side of the ship. Now, to get to the next floor, there's no elevator right up. You have to take this little ladder here, so... In the case of a fire emergency, the pilot and anybody up here, you're doomed. And that's kind of sad to say because you are sleeping up here too. It's like walking into a completely different ship when you enter this door. You still have some stainless steel, but now you have a lot of orange paint and a lot, lot better lighting. And then you're going to have your bunk beds over here. You got four of them. You also have a couple more suit lockers, two of them there. And then you have a see-through shower door with... Some fog glass there, but it's still not the greatest. I mean, you're like, I <laughs> can't see you. Now I can. Ha ha. <laughs> so this would obviously be your crapper as well. You can open up the, uh, you know, toilet favorite feature and your toilet paper and everything. Again, not going to touch any of that. I feel like staying alive for the rest of this review. From here, if you were to look through here, you got, you know, your typical kitchen of any Argo ship. Looks great. Industrial heavy equipment <laughs> you're going to be running the hell of a kitchen line here uh and then you know a little table more component access little door there you got yourself a nice little you know this is probably where all the rocks that you're collecting get grinded up and you know go get put into the saddle bags down below now if we continue on you're going to see a very inconveniently placed ladder this just leads you to the mining head downstairs which, of course, is underneath the pilot seat. Oh my god, what is my head doing? <laughs> so, go ahead. Oh, let me off. We go right here. You can go ahead and hop in this seat. It'll close the door, and, you know, you can go ahead and start mining. A little bit better view than the side wings, of course. And then if you were to go back up, we'll go ahead and go to the pilot seat really quick. And take a look there. Now, don't get my score wrong here when I give you my score. <laughs> I think this is a great ship if you have a team. You know, you got all the mining heads active, and you have a cargo ship, and you have everything going on, and everything's going well and great. Um, but I do, I do think this ship is around a 7 out of 10. Um, there is just a lot about this ship that is hit and miss. Uh, it's just right here is the pilot seat, co-pilot seat. You know, you have a top speed of 128 SCM with a maximum of 1,090. You carry 96 SCU when it comes to the minerals that you've mined. Uh, you got no defensive capabilities. Your badgers have 38 capacitors, 48 decoy, 5 noise. It feels very light for defense. The shielding's great. Ship HP is terrible. The stock quantum drive is trash. It's just... There's a lot going for the ship when you have a full-on crew, and there's a lot not going for the ship. Uh, and not just that, when the Arastra comes out, this ship is going to be the middle child pretty much forgotten about. Because everybody's going to want to fly the Arastra and not this ship. Why would you want to be in a multi-crew ship that is so less fun than the Arastra? <laughs> right? Um, this ship... I guess the only potential it has is why would you be in something so big like the Arastra when you could fly something smaller like this with the capability of still having a few people and, you know, mining a little bit smaller areas, right? Um, harder to get to areas, which is totally understandable. Oh, and also did I mention that the computer in this ship sounds almost like a droid out of Star Wars? <laughs> Take a listen real quick.
Roger, roger. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, thank you for watching again. I appreciate you all so much. Let me know what you think of the ship down in the comments below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks again for watching.